outnumbered over time. Oh, cheap baby. Oh, Everybody's getting all like lubricated. Like the oh, judge yeah. Andrea are drinking their drinks. They're huh? ready for Just OT. water. What are you Goodness. Having? Coffee. Coffee. You're having some water. I assume it's water. Josh Patch poured it, so I don't know. <laughs> He's our floor director. What are you having? Herbal tea. Herbal no, tea. it's wrong. Kennedy has yes. this like infusion of minerals. I've got a, a lovely blue bottle. It's got a cylinder of minerals inside. Wow. What do the minerals do for you? Well, I'll, I'll read it to you. you put oh, please. Uh, they, they help you uh, hydrate, stay healthy. They alkalize your body. It's an acidic body that actually creates more cancer cells. Hmm. Okay. Mm. There you mm. go. Mm. You have Paris, to read is the chat the sizzling? You showed me. The chat is sizzling. I mean, it's moving along so quickly. I've got 250 comments in queue, so I'm going to hit my refresh. Can I, uh, can so I read it very chat quick? While it does can it. I read a very quick uh, message read from Twitter to yeah, the please, judge and on. myself? This is from uh, at Thomas M. Herman, who says, at Judge Knapp and at Kennedy Nation, on the same show at the same time, that couch must reek of liberty right now. <laughs> <laughs> it does, and it that smells delicious. <laughs> well, all righty then. Um, um, and, all right, so my, my chat is like, there's so many people on it. Look. Oh, it's, it's frozen. I know. Can, can, we, can we talk about the label that uh, Donald Trump is putting on Hillary Clinton here? And if you think it's going to work, I mean, that's one of those conversations that I feel exhausted. like we got into. Made in China? Well, that she has, right, she has neither the strength nor the energy to be I president. No. And I'm wondering, does it work? Does it feel sexist? I mean, that word strength. They're going to try and say that that's what he, maybe that is what he means by it. Andrea, what do you think? I think they're going to try. I mean, it's not like Donald Trump has the greatest track record when it comes to comments about women. No. No, he right. doesn't. Oh, interesting. So I do think they're going to try and do that. There have been rumors about yeah. Hillary's health for years. The rumors were exacerbated oh, when yeah. she fell in her home and disappeared for a month, understandably, if she needed a month recuperation. The rumors were exacerbated again. You know, she doesn't campaign every day. She right. rests for two days and then campaigns. And of course, he's taken note of that. I, I think this is a a an area where she is weak and vulnerable. Right, and he's seized upon it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Rufus, as he does. Rufus Sulfur has an interesting question to me. He's I always on the chat. Better. I like Rufus. Yeah. Uh, is this he, somebody looking for free legal is, advice as you no, advertise? This is for the judge. <laughs> this is for the judge. Sorry, judge. And, and I won't read all of it because it's kind of long, but I'll just get to the meat of it. Is there an international court that would be able and willing to prosecute Hillary Clinton over Libya and the emails? Because he doesn't think that she'll see prosecution here in the Take United her to the States. Hague. She could be uh, prosecuted as a uh, war criminal in the International uh, Criminal Court by authorizing the arming of terrorist groups when she was Secretary of State, some of whom eventually killed uh, Americans in Libya. Hmm. Uh, it was a federal crime at the time, and she wasn't exempt from that crime. She permitted American and other arms dealers to arm uh, groups that the intelligence community warned her, uh, though they're going to topple your boy Gaddafi, they're terrorists and they hate us and these bullets are going to be fired at us. That is an international crime for which she could be prosecuted. Um, uh, question about that, though. What is the statute of limitations and could the same court go back to the United States arming the Mujahideen in Afghanistan against the Soviets? Well, Donald Rumsfeld and George Bush have both been charged by that court, so you can you, you can argue that it's political, yeah. but you can also argue they can't go to Europe because right. it's a European-wide uh, warrant. There is theoretically no statute of limitations on a war crime that involves death. Interesting. Mm. Judge, uh, can I ask you about Catherine Herridge's report um, that there was a meeting set up uh, between Trey Gowdy and the White House over those Benghazi hearings? A lot of people fired up about these hearings. There was some kind of negotiation to get Ben Rhodes uh, to come up and testify. That was Catherine Herridge's reporting. Uh, what do you garner from this report? That that uh, Gowdy and the Congressman Gowdy and the White House agreed there would be certain areas that would be off limits, but other areas would not. I also gather that they are finally, finally coming to a head and asking the right questions to the right people. What did the president know? When did he know it? Now, they have emails mm -hmm. that Ben Rhodes probably hasn't seen. Mm -hmm. So the thing to do is to confront him with the email, let him read it, and ask him questions about it while he's under oath. Uh, okay. All behind scenes. These are not public interviews. Of course not. Um, Mike Frazier said, did Harris just say that Marines are not the tip of the spear? That hurts my feelings and every Marine's feelings. Geez. Ooh. Okay. Typically speaking, we talk about the tip of the spear being special forces. And having grown up military, well, I, I don't can think tell you, you that... I intended it, to hurt anybody's feelings. No. You, you intended no, no, to be no. critical of the 
the president. Well, no, what I was saying is asking a question that is this a way of going around putting ground forces uh, against ISIS, just simply by saying that we're going to detach part of the unit of a Marine who was killed, which is not the same Look, thing. There as were Americans the on the ground in Libya when we bombed Gaddafi. Mm -hmm. They were out of uniform. They were either special forces or intelligence, intelligence community or both. Mm -hmm. The president argued that they were not covered by the War Powers Act and therefore he mm -hmm. didn't need congressional, congressional authorization. The courts have never looked at that. In my view, it's a very weak argument. It's a constitutional scholar as he's been doing for seven and a half years, evading and avoiding the Constitution. Exactly. Well, and I would say this, you know, we have 37 uh, advisors, uh, special forces, some of them, 3,700 in Syria and Iraq. Again, didn't need to go through Congress to put those on the ground because they were not considered ground troops, if you will. They were considered the tip of the spear, which is how we have talked about it. My concern, though, is they still are operating without a complete strategy. And how do we know that? Because the president has told us that he doesn't have one. So why are you dispatching anybody or detaching anybody or deploying whatever word you want to use, sending anybody in to fight when you don't have a complete strategy? Back to your first yeah. question 10 minutes ago. Hillary Clinton can't answer those questions when Trump puts them to her. Yeah. Yeah. Why can't she? Does she not know the answer or did she, they just make her look bad? Well, the, the true answers would make her and President Obama look reprehensibly bad. Yeah. Right. Um, what, so so why did Hillary Clinton push to oust Muammar Gaddafi in Libya? I mean, what, what she killing. said, what she said was going to happen didn't happen. And, you know, Judge, I, I think about, you know, what happened with the war. I mean, you're absolutely right. They, they don't want to answer those questions. But I think, you know, President Obama has made it very clear he wants to make it look like he's doing something. She presided and over... He, and, but but when, when have we ever sat around and talked about special forces and operations and covert ops and then have yeah. press releases? I mean, it was a statement. They basically said via press release, we're going to put some Marines on the and ground. And here's where they Let's are. Here's a map. That. Yeah. She presided over the Arab Spring in Yemen, it's far worse. Egypt, yeah. it's far worse. <laughs> Libya, it's unimaginably worse. She also, All of this on her watch, encouraged by her and facilitated by her. No, I think I think you could make a very clear case that a lot of the, uh, the current tur turmoil, this iteration of turmoil in the Middle East, is at her behest. It's, it's because it is a direct result of her actions when she was well, Secretary of State. Well, Donald Trump says, and it sounds like it's hyperbole because of the way he says it, mm -hmm. she's the worst secretary of state in modern times he makes a very strong argument and there is a very strong argument to support that claim really but well, i think he's panicked. i just gave you i just gave you three or four uh examples but so no one I asked her the question on the arab spring so in that first yeah, right. democratic debate when she stood up and talked about how wonderful seemingly libya was nobody followed yeah. up with a question to say well wait a minute wait a can second. we talk about what's happening in libya can we talk about how the arab spring proved to be a failure not only egypt but libya guess what's happening in syria no one seems to be really pushing mm -hmm. her about how she's exacerbated that situation and even as recently as last week her saying well nobody died that right. we know of i mean oh. so where was the media outrage on that <laughs> on the nobody died yeah i mean I, I saw it reported it a couple of things and sixth and avenue we were the only ones that covered it everybody else said well you you, you knew what she really meant to say. I mean, what she was trying to say Who is that this? no forces on the, the alphabet it repeatedly on. Yeah. I, like to call them I, I, I heard it repeatedly elsewhere. They said, you know, a point she was trying to make. She was talking about while we were actually there. So this is why people think that. that the media pick winners and losers, because we are not hearing often enough, in my humble opinion, and I've been doing this for a very long time. These words, I'm not going to pretend like I know that candidate's answers. I'm going to tell you based on what I'm seeing and what I'm reporting and what people People are telling me and you make your own decisions now, wh about what she that's really exactly meant. right because you know people who are reporting this information they are not part of her staff you know they well, are we not hope. they are not jake <laughs> sullivan they are not there to issue press releases or apologies afterward they are not there to clarify their personal exactly. inferences yeah so for instance when we were having what i thought was a deep end of the ocean conversation about the violence that are at some of the rallies and how they're yeah. popping up i think we've done a very even-handed job on our show andrea in mm. terms of looking at, look, they're not just all Trump rallies, and when they do happen, who's really culpable and responsible? We talked about the passing around. You used the word comportment by the candidates, yeah. and yeah. and I said that's an interesting Paris, term. Right. Okay, we, and the police also have a part in this, and the protesters have a part in this, the people who show up. There's enough, as you said, blame, but I say responsibility and accountability you, to go around. Let me take you back to October of 1996, when Roger Ailes founded Fox. We exist because of this media bias. 
That is the reason Fox came into existence, because we cover things with observations and through prisms that everybody else overlooks. Well, I never like to tout how much job security anybody has, but... It's a great I want to back on. you up, Harris. You make a great point. We, <laughs> I know you and I have strived to have both sides of this election covered. On even when they yell at each other. Even when they're screaming at each other. We've tried to present both sides, even <laughs> yeah. though some of them are not that popular. Just call this fairly as All we All right. See speaking it. of both sides very quickly, you know, do you see Trump press protesters at Hillary rallies? Do you see them at Bernie Sanders rallies? Um, you know, you, you can't make the same claim because until you have Trump protesters okay. who are blocking traffic and, and showing up wearing offensive... So that- that, that's an interesting question, because, you know, when you do get into these conversations, people will say, well, what about the Black Lives Matter? I remember when they took the microphone away from Bernie Sanders. Right. Um, so so right. what you're asking you me the is whether or not music. the same protesters who were showing up at a Trump rally are showing up other places. I'm not checking ID, so I don't know. But if you're saying that are there people who are rowdy showing up at these rallies, the answer is yes. And we have some of it on tape. And I think it's also... A different question. I think it's why isn't the media asking the protest? Why are they asking the Democratic candidates to denounce Black Lives Matter? You don't see that question coming up. I mean, these are organized left wing protesters and nobody seems to be asking Hillary Clinton or Barack Obama to denounce these protesters. Yet they keep asking Trump to do it. That's the question. That's the problem. They're wrapping us up, as Kennedy just told me. I think I was sitting on my IFB because I didn't hear them. <laughs> uh, but Judge? Can't you hear them screaming in our ears? No. Oh. Only kidding. My husband says I only hear what I want to hear. He doesn't mean it. We'll see you tomorrow.